Today, I want to talk about giving what the Lord asks us to give, even when it feels like we don't have anything to offer or what we have to offer seems so small that it couldn't possibly make a difference. We're not capable. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough money. We're not smart enough or talented enough, or whatever it is. We're not well known enough, whatever it is that it doesn't matter. Um, there are several stories in the Bible that are wonderful for talking about this. And the first one um, is the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And so first I want to talk about in Matthew 18, whenever Jesus says how we all must become like this little child to enter the kingdom of God. So in the story of the feeding of the 5,000, we know that there were probably more than 5,000 people there because it says 5,000 men. So there were likely women and children as well. And um, in a crowd of that many people, don't you know that so many of them brought food? They got their little kids with them. They're planning on staying all day. They're traveling. There were people that had food in that crowd. But the only one, when Jesus sent the disciples out to ask for the food, if anyone had food to, to share, the only one who said yes was this boy, this boy with his childlike faith. Um, who said, yes, I have these five loaves and two fishes. And I feel like the other people in the, the crowd who didn't offer their food, many of them probably weren't selfish. They probably were willing to share, but they couldn't see how the little thing that they had for their family could possibly make a dent in this gigantic crowd. And so they just didn't say anything. But we can see by the the little boy just just being willing and giving what he had, even though he couldn't have possibly believed it would make a difference. And maybe he was too young to know that it wouldn't make a difference. And that's that childlike faith that we have to stop looking at like whether we can make a difference. And we have to start believing that whatever we give, the Lord will do what he will with it. We just need to be obedient with what he's asked. So the little boy gives his five loaves and two fishes and the Lord does multiply it. And because the little boy said yes and gave what he had, even though it was in no way ever going to be enough, he is part of that miracle. And that's what we do when we offer what we have, even though when we can't see how it could possibly make a difference, Jesus multiplies it. Um, and there are a couple of other stories that illustrate the same point in different ways. I think about the widow who gave her two mites. Um, so Jesus and the disciples are watching people put their offerings into the offering plate at the temple. And the Pharisees are going forward and just putting a ton of money in, very showy about it. And then this, this widow comes up and puts basically two pennies in. And Jesus says she gave more than all of them. So it's not about how much we have to offer. It's about offering what we have to the Lord. And so we look at people who maybe are more talented and have more money or more resources, whatever they have, more time, more talent, whatever they have, more, more personality, whatever they might have that we don't have. We look at them and we see them giving it generously and we think, well, I could never make the difference they're making. But Jesus says that if you give out of your lack, that is giving more than all of those people who just have this innate ability or money and just are full. Their lives are overflowing already, but they don't give all. They give part. And it looks like a ton to us because it's way more than we could ever give, but it's not, it, it, it's still not all. So all we have to do is be obedient and give what we have. And the Lord multiplies that. Um, and I have thinking, been thinking also about how that connects to the parable of the talents, where the three men were given different amounts in their lives that they were responsible for. And the parable says that they were given each one according to his ability. And so um, it's not shameful that the one who only got the two um, talents to uh, invest for that master, it's, it's not shameful. That's how much he was allotted and how much he could have done just as much as that widow with her two pennies by giving it and investing it for the Lord. Instead, because of his fear, he buried it. So I want to encourage you, don't bury your talents. And I love how that word me is, is for the money in that parable. And yet we use it in a way that is still so applicable to this meaning today, because so many of us do bury our talents because we can't see how they could make a difference. And we're afraid that we'll fail and we might as well just not try and we'll just keep it safe and stick it up on a shelf. And, um, 
But the Lord says, no, invest it. I gave what I gave to you so that you can invest it in the kingdom of God. Whatever you have is worth investing in the kingdom of God. And if you give your little talents that seem like so much less than others, it is given more than anybody else who might have abundance and is still not getting all. And there's a Bible verse that says, neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything but God who gives the increase. We plant and we water and God is the one who multiplies. It's not our job to be concerned about whether what we have is enough. It is our uh, uh, duty, um, for lack of a better word, to give when the Lord asks, do you have any food? Do you have anything that you can give to this person who is afraid at church or to this person that you see on the street and maybe the Lord pushes you to go speak to that person? Um, you might only have a very awkward conversation with that person, but you gave what you had and the Lord can do what he will with that. So don't be afraid to offer up your talents, your time, your money, um, your effort, whatever it is. It's not going to look foolish in the kingdom of God. So it might have looked foolish to those Pharisees watching that woman put in her two pennies and them thinking, well, she didn't give very much. That can't possibly do anything. But to the Lord, it is more than all those people had given. So give what you have to give when the Lord asks, because it is worth it. And that gives you the opportunity, like that little boy with the five loaves and two fishes, to be a part of Jesus's miracle. <clears throat> and so many people will just say no, because they don't see that how it could make a difference. And then they don't get to be a part of what Jesus is doing. So let's just give what we have and be a part of what the Lord is doing and trust that he will multiply it as he sees fit.